Hi, Founder fans. Jason here. Welcome to Founder of the Day the Trivia Time. That's right. We're doing it on Thursday this week. Uh, it is Christmas Eve tomorrow and New Year's Eve the following week, so we're moving to Thursdays. Uh, I might stick around with it on Thursdays, though. I've realized, you know, people are busy on the weekends, so maybe Thursdays will be better. Let me know in the comments uh, how you might feel about that. Now, we got a little bit of a uh, little bit of a review this week. Colonel, hi. Can't stay, but I want to drop it. Well, hi there, Colonel. I'm glad you've come through. Happy holidays. We are doing a bunch of holiday stuff this week, so, uh, you know, it'll be fun. Uh, before you go, let us know what your favorite holiday song is, okay? That'll be perfect. Hope you and your family have the best of times, uh, and we'll see you when you're back. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get through the trivia as quick as we can, so hopefully you can get a few questions in. Uh, I'm going to pop over here to study hall for a moment. i uh, got to fix up the tools over here, by which I mean change it to countdown to trivia. Okay, and we'll give it we'll give it about seven minutes. There's only a few people, so we're going to run through it as quick as we can. Because uh, it was half a week. I did it on Saturday, and now it's already only Thursday, so yada, yada, yada. Uh, I'm holding back sneeze. I apologize. Um, and you know what? Let me pop this out and give it a copy. Uh, real quick. Copy. It's always something you forget to do. Of course. But I want to put the chat box over on the side here. In case you guys want to include be included in the chat. There we go. We'll see how it works out. And there it is. Colonel's already there. So, let's rock and rooter. Already about half a minute in. Uh, talk about Francis Nash real quick. So Francis Nash was um, he was from North Carolina. He was a kind of a self-made lawyer. Him and his brother Abner uh, in Hillsboro, North Carolina, which was on the frontier at that point. He's more famous for being involved in the War of the Regulation, aka the Regulator Movement, aka the Regulator Insurrection, aka a bunch of things. Uh, it, between late 1760s and early 1770s, there were a bunch of people in Frontier. A little drum board. Okay, very nice. Bright Eyes has a good version of that song. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Um, now you know I grew up on emo music. <laughs> uh, Francis Nash out there doing his regulator stuff. Um, uh, he's a lawyer on the Frontier. He has saw people come in. Uh, the The... The Frontiers people are very unhappy with the coastal elites, and what they see as a corrupt ring of lawyers, judges, and sheriffs who are giving them unfair taxation and enforcing it unfairly, especially because at the time there was a drought, which meant the farmers couldn't really grow food for themselves, let alone food to sell. So they didn't, they couldn't make any money when the community was based primarily on farming. They have a little bit of a rebellion there. They take a few courthouses. At one point, France Nash has to run away and not uh, stay in Hillsboro because they were coming for him. He was accused of embezzling. Uh, that never seems to have been actually tried or, or convicted for that. But then again, they were saying how things were corrupt and he was part of the corruption. Uh, he helps to suppress the movement, uh, ends up joining the Revolutionary War a few years later, leading some of the same men he was suppressing at the time. Uh, he becomes a brigadier general. Unfortunately, he is killed at the Battle of Germantown fairly early in the war. Uh, I'll move right along here to William Maxwell. Uh, William Maxwell uh, was accused of one of my favorite things in the world. We'll get there. Uh, he was uh, from uh, New Jersey, always wanted to serve uh, in as a soldier, serves as a soldier for a little while, goes over to uh, fights in the French and Indian War, ends up going to... Uh, uh, overseas uh, forts, there it is, forts on the frontier... In the West, uh, when the Revolutionary War comes around, he ends up joining the Continental Army. He is quickly promoted to Brigadier General, during which time he's most notable for uh, just before the crossing of the Delaware in seven, December, on Christmas 1776, wink wink for trivia, uh, he ends up going up the the Delaware River and securing boats so that first of all, the British couldn't take them across and surprise the Americans. And second of all, the Americans could take the boats and surprise the British. Uh, and he brings those down to help Washington and, and John Glover, 
who's the guy who really oversees the operation, the crossing of the, the storming of Normandy, if you will, when it comes to crossing the Delaware. Uh, John Glover does that. Uh, Maxwell then serves in a bunch of other battles. Eventually, at the Battle of Monmouth, he actually does a pretty good job, but he is accused of being drunk. But the accusation is he is disguised with liquor, which is one of my favorite accusations of all time. Uh, he is given a court-martial, but he has uh, gotten away with it. He is put back into service. He serves for several more years before other accusations come up and uh, Washington just doesn't want to deal with him anymore. Hi, Troy. Thank you for coming. One more person before we get to trivia. Just doing a quick sum up of the week. There weren't a lot of people this week. So uh, as we know, it was a shorter week. David Hosack. David Hosack is the doctor at the duel. In the play Hamilton, uh, they reference uh, bring a doctor that you know in one song and they say, uh, oh, no, the get a doctor on site in one song and uh the doctor that you know or he's first singing about hamilton he brought a doctor that he knew the doctor that he knew was david hosack they actually both knew david hosack really well and that's why he was the right person to be on the scene he was also a gentleman so he would not uh say anything wrong with this technically illegal fight that these gentlemen were having uh he didn't just turn around so he had deniability he actually went out to the, the other side of the woods till he heard the gunshot Hosack runs over uh, just in time to see Hamilton falling down, and it's to Hosack that Hamilton turns and utters the phrase, this is a mortal wound, doctor. Uh, Hosack then joins Hamilton on the boat ride back across the Hudson to his family, keeps Hamilton alive just long enough to see his family, and then uh, Hosack uh, is there when Hamilton passes away. Uh, he actually earlier was the one of the people who tried to keep Hamilton's son, Philip, alive after his duel. He was, he took an interesting path. Uh, he was a little bit younger than many of the other founders at, at a time when uh, you could just go say, I'm a doctor now, and people would come to you as a doctor, but the better doctors would usually study in Europe. But leading up to the Revolutionary War and just after, there were many universities in North America that were starting to offer medical programs. Uh, Hosack has an interesting experience where he actually takes a medical program in America and then goes to Europe to further his studies, which is backwards from how most people were doing it at the time, but would later become popular once America got better at teaching people about being doctors. Uh, Hosack goes on to have a really successful career. He ends up investing in a lot of property in New York State. He starts the, I think it's pronounced the Elgin Botanical Society, which is the first botanical gardens in the United States of America, where they have all sorts of fun plants. He also becomes a patron of the arts, so to speak. Uh, by the way, want to support the channel? Check out Patreon. Thank you to the Patriots on Patreon who do support the channel. Uh, we are now doing uh, a Sunday night live discussion every week for the Patriots, though some clips will be put out for you guys. Uh, he was a patron. One of the people he was a patron for was actually Samuel Morse, who ends up going to uh, pay for, uh, who makes popular the telegraph, which is a hugely imp important moment in American history. Once the telegraph comes around, David Hosack did help to pay for that. And my time is up. I will end with saying David Hosack, when uh, later in life, there's the Great Fire of New York City in 1835. David Hosack loses millions of dollars worth of property and then dies a week later of seemingly a heart attack it seems like or a stroke and it seems like losing his entire uh life uh pushed him over the edge he was an older man by that point though it's david hosack that's a review yada 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 let's do that trivia welcome to america we're going to do some trivia i do need to uh add your comments over here because as always there's one thing i forget to do there's always so much there's a lot of little odds and ends i have to uh touch every time I set this up and there's always something I forget paste that I will do that and I understand about the timer where is it here it is change the timer to the timer and here we go with that trivia one minute per okay is it it is timer games. Okay, I gotta change the timer games. Whammy, there we go. And it's rolling. Who's ready for some trivia? What New York State office did Aaron Burr excel in, leading to his appointment as a U.S. Senator? Aaron Burr was appointed to this position in the late 1780s, right after he sat out the ratification convention for the Constitution. Uh, he had already kind of made a name for himself as an important leader 
in the New York State Assembly. Not necessarily a leader in the New York State Assembly, but a little bit of a radical. Uh, he had done things like, oh, something crazy. Why don't we let women vote? And he's one of the first people to float the idea in the New York State Assembly of liberating black people and ending slavery. So he was a forward thinker. Ehrenberg gets a lot of uh, doo-doo thrown at him nowadays, uh, but he was a very forward thinker. And he ends up getting this position. He impresses a lot of people in this position. And he was a moderate, not wishy-washy like they say in the play. He was a moderate who was very good at this. Uh, waiting for one of you guys to throw me an answer. Time is up. Time is up, so I'm going to throw it out there, whether or not you like it. Uh, attorney General. He was Attorney General of New York State. He put forward uh, a recommendation, uh, almost, a, uh, oh, Troy, coming in right at the last minute. I'm sure you typed it in before I got there. I'm about four seconds ahead of you, so I'll give it to you. Uh, he was a um, very good at a lot of things. Uh, he put together a, a whole plan to like, essentially rewrite New York State's laws, uh, update them to fall more along the lines of a state as opposed to a colony of Great Britain, which most of the core of the common laws came from. Uh, and it was because of that that he was then sent to the United States Senate. Question number two. What was the name of the doctor at the Burr-Hamilton duel? I really want this gentleman to get credit. I was literally just talking about him. Let's see if you remember. Anyone popping in now? You didn't have to be here for our little review, our little study hall at the beginning. I almost forgot to put the... I didn't almost forget. I did forget to restart the clock. Got to remember to restart that clock. Whoopsie doodle. Uh, let's see over here. Jeremy Galloway, we are great. Our holiday season is well underway, and we are doing that trivia. So uh, if you know the doctor who was president at the Burr-Hamilton duel, you let us know, and you let us know how you're doing today. How's your how's your preparations? Did you get all your shopping done? Are you, uh, like me, you're going to go buy everything for your family tomorrow? JK, uh, that time in my life has elapsed. <laughs> but mark my words, there was a time. When Christmas Eve was my, okay, let's do this. Okay, let's go. Let's see. Okay, we got a an answer from Troy. Uh, Colonel, looks like uh, she may have bounced. She did say she couldn't stay too long today, but that's okay. All right, and it looks like we're getting our answers in. And those are the correct answers. Dr. David Hosack, we just kind of talked about him a lot. Uh, really important to the development of New York City afterwards, which is, I always find is really fascinating. He ends up being really important to uh, early New York City. William Maxwell. What was Brigadier General William Maxwell accused of when given a court-martial after the Battle of Monmouth? I grew up reading it as Monmouth. Monmouth? Um, probably still saying it wrong. Uh, General William Maxwell led men at Monmouth. Uh, he actually did a pretty good job. Uh, he was given a court-martial. I will say he was absolved of wrongdoing during the court-martial, though he was not ever cleared of what he was actually accused of. I hope I'm not giving too much away. What was he accused of that led to a court martial? Uh, Troy coming in with very close to the uh, precise wording. Um, uh, and as time elapses, yes, he was uh, disguised with liquor. <laughs> uh, essentially drunkenness uh, and I don't know if I uh, really elaborated on it before uh, he he was cleared of John Sullivan who led the court martial essentially said yeah he was drunk but he did a very good job so we don't care <laughs> yeah he's always drunk What's different this time? Uh, after Monmouth, that's when Charles Lee was court-martialed. A lot of people were court-martialed. Uh, unrelated, Philip Schuyler was court-martialed just about after that. So that was the time to be court-martialing people. Galloway shopping done. Day was great until a bit ago. Now not so much. Well, we're gonna we're gonna cheer you right up here, Mr. Jeremy. Uh, describes my twenties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was definitely undercover throughout a good portion of my twenties. Uh, no mean wire. Uh, yeah, hard liquor. Well. Uh, that was actually probably more available, uh, I don't know, particularly at the Battle of Monmouth, but that was generally more available. Uh, it was, it went a lot farther when it came to being a little tipsy. Uh, yes, those days have elapsed. Okay, glad we're all aging here. <laughs> In Federalist number 20, what contemporary nation did James Madison believe was held together only by a powerful executive and external threat 
of Invasion. Got to pop up that thing right there. Moonshine. Uh, technically, the phrase moonshine wasn't around yet. Uh, my understanding is the phrase moonshine, and I'm not, uh, you know, as well read at this time period. My understanding is moonshine was, uh, came about as a phrase primarily during the Prohibition because that's when the rum runners would go and uh, deliver, they deliver the alcohol by night and they'd make it at night so that they wouldn't be discovered. So they use the cover of darkness uh, or the shine of the moon to make their illicit alcohols run it. The phrase was used before the 1920s, but that's about when it became popular. About the same time, those people were creating NASCAR, if you're interested in, in NASCAR races. Uh, let's see, we got some answers coming in. Lithuania, great. I didn't think so. I just, that's actually a really good answer, <laughs> Jeremy, even though we did not discuss it. As time runs out, I will pop up. Uh, Troy is right. I believe they're called themselves the Republic of the Netherlands. Uh, it was Netherlands. Galloway, you usually listen to the Federalists. You, you must have missed this week. It's all right. They've been kind of boring the last few weeks. James Madison giving us fairly irrelevant history lessons. <laughs> Let's continue. Okie do. What event consisted of North Carolina citizens on the frontier taking up arms against the colonial government? And I know there's an abbreviation of government, and I, I just couldn't come to my mind. I didn't look it up. I know that's not it. <laughs> but what event in the late 1760s, early 1780s uh, consists of that? You missed the last three. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Well, we, I'm usually doing them on Tuesdays. I will note while we're hanging out here, there are some changes coming up to the channel in the new year. I'm, I'm trying to reconfigure everything to make it better for you guys. Is it just GOVT? Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, but what's the answer? Oh, did time run out or did I forget to start it again? Either way, the answer is... The Regulator Movement, a.k.a. the Regulator Insurrection, a.k.a. the War of Regulation, a.k.a. the War of the Regulators, a.k.a. the Regulator War. It goes by many a name, and it is not related to uh, a group calling themselves the Regulators at the same time in South Carolina, although their issues were fairly similar. Let's pop this up. What did Geo Washington do on Christmas Eve? 1783. We got a few George Washington Christmas questions coming up because you know what? It's Christmas season. So what did George Washington do on Christmas Eve 1783? As I sip my tin. Nate <laughs> talk. Oh, dude. I <laughs> Wow. I didn't even put that. I can't believe that didn't even pop into my mind, but fair enough. Um, Different group. I assure you, um, what did George Washington do on Christmas Eve, 1783? And this is, uh, I don't want to give too much away. Did I, I forgot to run the time again. Okay, I'll run it now. I'll give you some time to think. Think about what's happening in 1783. Probably didn't shop on Amazon. No. Jeremy Galloway. You know what? This is really just the two of you playing. We'll skip the timer for now. Uh, yeah. He returned home on Christmas Eve after eight years of war. Eight years. Think, where were you eight years ago? I was closing in at the end of my 20s, as we were discussing before. That's how long ago it was, and that's how long George Washington was at war. And he, after the evacuation of the British in November uh, of 1783 in, in New York, he pretty quickly runs down to, uh, 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 not Baltimore, where were they? Annapolis? Baltimore? They, they might, oh, they might, no, Baltimore. They were in Baltimore at the time. Somewhere in Maryland. He resigns his commission and runs right home and uh, gets home just in time for Christmas to celebrate with Martha for the first time in, in eight years. It's, it's really, uh, it's really one of the heartwarming tales of the American Revolution that you don't hear as much as you absolutely definitely should. Uh, yeah, the year is a hint. So here's another Christmas one. What did George Washington do on Christmas 1776? So, let's pop back seven years. He's already been at war, and it's Christmas. So he's already been at war for a year and a half at this point. He's still got seven more to go before what we were just talking about when he finally gets home. Uh, but Christmas Eve, uh, I'm sorry, Christmas de Day, it's the night of the 25th. I'm giving a lot of hints here and not putting the timer up because why would I remember the timer? I'm sure there's a way I can automatically have it turn on when I hit buttons, but we are not there yet. 
he attacked Trenton. Well, Troy, you're not wrong, but that's not the answer I have listed. Technically, he attacked Trenton on the morning of the 26th. Wink. <laughs> wink, 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 nudge, nudge, right? Is that the old Monty Python thing? I.e. crossed the Delaware. We're going to pop that. We're going to give it to you, Troy. Yes, he crossed the Delaware on the night of the 25th into the morning of the 26th. Uh, Colonel is still around or has returned, maybe. Yes, he crossed the Delaware. Uh, major turning point. Uh, not necessarily in the war strategically, but when it comes to morale building, absolutely. Now, that is December 25th, 1776. What happened... Uh, oh, oh, I put him out of order. What happened two days later on December 27th, 1776? What did Con Continental Congress give to George Washington? Or it might be better put, what did Continental Congress do for George Washington, two days later, on December 27th, 1776, just up as word is arriving of the crossing of the Delaware. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy, uh, man, imagine Martha for those eight. Women were stronger, but probably she freaked out. They corresponded a lot, didn't they? Uh, but letters did... Yes, so they corresponded kind of constantly. Martha all, all, often found herself with the Continental Army, not really as a camp follower, but she was often there uh, kind of as a spiritual leader. Not a spiritual, like religious spiritual, but a morale leader. For many of the women there, you know, you often see uh, 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 Henry Knox's spouse, uh, not Dorothy, I can't remember her first name, but uh, Mrs. Knox was there. Mrs. Green was there. Many of the high-ranking generals' wives were there. And they all looked up to Martha Washington. They had a lot of sad Christmases, actually. Uh, for example, you know, uh, her oldest son, John Park Custis, dies just after the Battle of Yorktown after serving as an aide-de-camp to George weeks before Christmas in 1781, so two years before this. Uh, so, extended enlistments. Uh, they hadn't been resupplied, so no shoes. Nope. So... Full, ample, and complete powers. Now, this is one quote out of the entirety of the, the, the not the letter, the, the resolution that they pass. They essentially say, George Washington, this is your army. You can be a dictator if you want. Do what you want. They acknowledge in the letter, I couldn't print the whole letter right here, but they acknowledge in the letter how there is just simply not... A body of Congress with 20 to 50 people in it cannot make split second decisions that you need to complete a wartime effort. And in this situation, when you're at war, you need someone to make those decisions. And they give him that power. He's able to raise troops. He's able to ra ra take them from the states. He is able to... Uh, force inhabitants to use continental currency, even though it was valueless, uh, but basically say, you know, I need food from this farm. And Washington was actually really good about not just raiding farmers, but paying them for their foodstuffs. They took it by force, but they said, here's, here's some valueless continentals. But Congress gave him the ability to do that. There's a whole slew of other powers he is granted by Continental Congress on December 27, 1776. Uh, there the, the, the was a temporary grant, and they but they would re-grant him those powers uh, from time to time. And I know it's not as Christmassy as we've been discussing, but still uh, right up there. Uh, kind of a random question. I, I just, I really like this. It's important to know. What was the most populated city in the South during the American Revolution? So let's say South of Pennsylvania. You know, uh, Philly and, and Boston were the two biggest. New York quickly catching up. Uh, what was the biggest city in the South? It's the fourth biggest during this whole, whole time period, from before the Revolution through the after the Revolution. Uh, you know, Galloway, uh, actually, Atlanta would not become much more... Uh, Atlanta was... They talk about the burning of Atlanta in, in the Civil War, which was, you know, serious, but Atlanta was still smaller even then. Atlanta becomes populated uh, a lot later in, uh, in the 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 history of the United States. There it is. Found it. It's in my mind. Uh, I know where we live. Um, I keep forgetting to do the timer. Not getting any other answers. Yes, Charleston is right. Charleston, South Carolina was a huge city at this point. Uh, just after the, before the revolution, you have Ben Franklin 
who was the first person to really franchise businesses, he franchises one of his businesses and opens a printing press in South Carolina with the Timothy family. Uh, side note, uh, Mrs. Timothy ends up running that business for quite a while, one of the first uh, women to really run a business in colonial America. And then afterwards, you see things like many of the early uh, theaters and some of the early important uh, theater producers go to Charleston because it was a center of culture. Uh, it's one of the reasons South Carolina was more powerful than it probably should. Well, no, it was pretty populated in general, but either way, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, and we're up to our last question. We are going to play a little bit of the Sporkle uh, trivia guessing games together, because why not? It's a fun time. This is America. Uh, but last question. What's your favorite Christmas song or album? Let me know. I'm going to put a timer here because there is a correct answer, and I assure you, you are all wrong. <laughs> Throw them in there. 55 seconds. I'm going to take a sip of water. Let me know what Christmas tunes you like, what holiday songs or jingles uh, or bells. Are your favorite and as i said uh there is a correct answer i i i sincerely doubt any of you will get it <laughs> uh yes and I, I will wait patiently it's hard for me to stall on this one most of the questions are like history questions and i can like shed some uh perspective on the answer and the question this is you know you know christmas songs come later <laughs> kind of irrelevant but hey it's the holiday season and we like to have fun here it's trivia after all surprise no one put any songs there i know it can be very hard to come up with a favorite on the spot uh and uh time is running out so as time uh, elapses uh, i will let you know the correct answer it is percy the puny poinsettia it is from the Elmo and Patsy album that is famous for Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. If you've never heard this song, you must put it on after this is over, and I challenge you not to shed a tear. I challenge you to listen to this song and not get a little teary-eyed about the Christmas spirit. I'm, I'm, it's, it's happening to me just talking about the song itself. The album also has a close second favorite. This is the album my family would put on when we were young. There's a lot of good songs on there, actually. Uh, and one of them, also, uh, uh, honorable mention, is for uh, Senor Santa Claus. Uh, it's, a, it's a young Mexican child, or man, who just simply wants a peso so he can buy a flower for his girlfriend. Another, like, that one's a lot of fun and kind of silly, but also another tearjerker, like... <laughs> Elmo and Patsy is the most underrated Christmas album of all time. This is the correct answer. You have to deal with it. Uh, Troy, Xmas song by Dean Martin or Metallica. <laughs> That's a good one. There were a few Blink-182 songs I thought about putting up here, but this is a family channel. <laughs> Those are not right. I really suggest you look it up. It's a, it's a joke album, kind of, but it's, it's a really... This is the... This is the Christmas song. That, and if I'm being honest, uh, uh, I'll be home for Christmas because I live far away from my family and I don't actually see them. So that one makes me a little teary-eyed. I like the tear jerkers on Christmas, if that has not been made perfectly clear. How about we do some gaming? I am going to pop this up. Uh, you you like it. It's I, I know you'll, you'll at least, you guys will at least appreciate it, even if it's not your favorite song in the whole wide world um let's see so we are going to be doing this super track of american founders uh there was one oh i didn't pull it up but uh, let's just get right to it let's get right to it team you know the drill uh if you're new here which it seems like it's mostly just Troy and Jeremy hanging out, but if someone else is watching wants to play along, this is what we do. We are going to name as many American founders as we can. Uh, it specifically focuses on the uh, uh, legislative branch. So while many of the generals of the war will not be correct answers, uh, certain people like uh, anyone who went to the First Continental Congress, signed the Declaration, signed the Articles of Confederation, or attended the Constitutional Convention, even if they didn't sign, or was a member of the first Congress, AKA the first House of Representatives or the first United States Senate. It's a list of names. Uh, Jeremy and, and Troy, it looks like it might just be to you, you two guys. So let's see if you guys can pull off a little Christmas miracle. 
Uh, as soon as you guys say a name, I will start typing. I recommend you start with the big six because we don't want to miss the easy names. So get the easy names out of the way right off the bat here. Whammy, whammy, whammy. I am getting nothing. Don't worry. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm hosting the show. And bam, there we go. Jeremy's on it. Troy, catch up. There it is. Franklin Madison Hamilton. Great. There's more. There's 240 more names. Adams. I'll tell you what. We'll see. If we're below 170. If we're below 170 when we hit 10 minutes, I will try and throw in some names too. Adams. Oh, we did Adams. Lee. It's going to be a bunch of right answers. I'm going to pull this down just a little so we can see the, the track itself. Sherman, good one. This one might be too much for two people. Jefferson, Dickinson. Don't want to forget John Dickinson. Uh, arguably the most important name no one remembers. Uh, Reed. There's another really important name no one remembers. It's one of my kids' names. Um, uh, John Jay. Yes. Yes. Oh, I forgot about John Jay. The third, there are three names that no one remembers that are really important. John Jay is the one people usually can, many people can find in their heads. Rufus King, nice. Not who I was going for, but Rufus King is hugely important. Alsip, which I've learned I, I pronounced wrong in the video I made. I called it Aesop, but that is wrong. Uh, Dayton, yes. Humphreys, yes. Uh... Bait. So I usually remember, I'm going to give you guys some hints since it's just you two guys really playing along right now. When I see Dayton, I also see Drayton and Dalton. And then with these, I go for Dewar and Dwayne and Dyer. So I linked all those D's together. Yes, Lynch is two. Definitely. Papa and Son Lynch. Climber. Mifflin. Yes, Dunder Mifflin. Uh -huh. Payne, I it just spelled the one way, but yeah, those are right. Pinkney should be two. Yes, sir. Smith. Morris. There it is. That's a bunch of correct answers. And that's the name of one of my kids. It's my grandmother's maiden name. So it worked out. Thornton. Uh, if I spell it right. Thornton with uh, another, an extra N in there. And I'll give you a hint. Galloway. I'll give you a hint, Galloway. <laughs> I'll give you Galloway. I'm going to give you a hint. Galloway, Rutledge, Matthews, uh, did we already do Matthews? Matthews, oh, one T, uh, Johnson, which reminds me of John Stun. Ashley's not here. She took my hints a while ago, and that's one of the reasons she's very good at it, is I have a few, like, triggers that hint. Troy, take the hint, <laughs> I'm not saying it. I'm not going to type it until I see someone do it. Bland Nick, what's up, bud? Just in time to help with the magic here. Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the party. Ellington. Ellington. Not not Ellington, but I'll give, I'll give you another hint. There's a bunch of Worths involved, and Ellington is kind of close to one of the Worths. Braxton, yes. Yeah, yeah, we really missed uh, missed some of the questions. We had some Christmas questions, but that's right. Uh, Reed and Reed are both correct answers, and we had only gotten one of them. Uh, Worthington, well, no, other way around. <laughs> the the L part is the part that's close. Uh, Mick Henry, yes, Mick Henry, Mick Henry is one of the answers. Mick Henry. One of the answers. <laughs> uh, Gadsden. Uh, blend? No, he's got Blend. Harrison is one. It's my my son's friend's name. Uh, hunt? Not a hunt. Hunting Ton is going to be a correct answer. Absolutely. Pendleton is the correct answer. Edmund Pendleton. Absolutely. Hughes. Uh, no one said Galloway yet. 
<laughs> I'm putting it out there. I haven't typed it yet. Uh, with is not pronounced white, as I've learned. Klingon with an A. Yes, sir. Harvey. Uh, Middleton. Yep. Arthur and Henry. Uh, Stockton. Walker. Yeah, you have to type it. Calloway. I give you such a good hint that there's no way I could possibly live or more. It's live or more. Troy, just putting it out there. I know it's there's so many names. I'm not really a stickler for spelling. St. Clair, which I understand is actually pronounced Sinclair. Balsam. Balsam, like the prison. Uh, Morris, we just popped in. Griff. No, Griff. Patterson. Uh, we must have done Patterson. Wait, is it 1T? Patterson. Yes, 1T. Uh, Griffin. Yes, Cyrus Griffin. And I think there's another one. White. Absolutely. Uh, Galloway. There. I saw Galloway. You typed it. You typed it when you were telling Troy to type it. You typed it. Deal with it. More. <laughs> Parker. Uh, let's see here. All right, we're up to 80. We're doing pretty good for three people. Well, fortunately, Nick popped in. Giles. Yes. Give us a little bit of help there. What a guy. Humphreys. I think we did Humphreys pretty early. You didn't come in too late. You didn't miss a lot, uh, Nick. But, uh, Thomas. No, Thomas. Uh, Climber. Did we do? We did Climber. Goldsboro is a correct answer. We got the reads. Uh, pink knee. We did. It's pink, like the color knee. It's tough. Uh, Borum. Yeah. Simon Borum, one of the reasons I started this channel. Fitzsimmons. Yes, the Catholic who signed the Constitution. Morris, we got Morris, guys. It's, it's my son's name. My grandma's maiden name. We went, did you guys, I'm, I'm glad you guys really like it, though. Especially because it is several correct answers. I, Morris, I think, is the most correct answers. Robert Morris, Governor Morris, and Lewis Morris, all signers of one document or another. Uh, if not... Uh, uh, a few more of the Morris family. Robert Morris is unrelated to the rest of the bunch. Uh, Crane, did we do Crane? We did. Uh, Mifflin, we did. Wincoop, it's a great name. Mason, Randolph, Scott, yes. Henry, there it is. Got it. Ames, nice. Nick is flying right now. Absolutely stomping it. Strong with an R, because I can spell Sullivan. Yes, there's a New Hampshire guy. We got some more New Hampshire guys coming in. Ro. Oh, it's not mine either. Robert Doe. I think it's the second one. Yes, Grout. Uh, Grout. First name is escaping me, but he created a telegraph system. Not an electrical telegraph, but a telegraph system in Massachusetts uh, using essentially big flags on big buildings. Strickland? No. Interesting guess. Uh, let's see. Ooh, we're doing pretty good on Virginia. Got a bunch of Constitution signers missing. Uh, Dickinson we did get actually pretty quick, which is great. He's amazing. Climber, we did. Lewis is a correct answer. Absolutely. Uh, Biddle, yes. King. Uh, we did Rufus King a little bit earlier. Yeah. Popping in all the ones we did just before you got here. You're only a few minutes in. Ingersoll, good one. Name Ingersoll is interesting. There's a different Ingersoll. Uh, the Sheffield Resolves, which were written uh, in Western Massachusetts before the war, were sent to uh, an Ingersoll who was working in the colonial government as their representative when they made their grievances known. Uh, Bartlett, two T's at the end there. Uh, or th there's three T's in that name, actually. Collins, yes, absolutely. Okay. Houston. I'm going to give some away here. Houston. Oh, spelled like Houston. It was his kids that started Houston. Uh, and then there's Hudson and there's another one. I can't remember it. Uh, Langworthy with a Y. It's another one of the Worths. Few. Morton. Absolutely. We got the Worths. You know what? It's Christmas, so I'm going to give some away. Wolcott. Absolutely. It's insane. Uh, Henry, we just did Rush for sure. So there, the Worths are, we did Langworthy. Uh, there's Ellsworth. Wentworth. Wadsworth. 
Blood Worth. And I might even be forgetting another one. Wilson, absolutely. James Wilson is hugely important. Uh, signed the Declaration and the Constitution. So pretty, pretty important dudes. Uh, William, before I type, when I type in William's son, watch what happens when I type in the S. Williams. <laughs> William's son, also. Uh, Taylor, for sure. Holt in there it is, Nick. Holt 10. Uh, Martin. Martin left, is one of the many people. Martin left the Constitutional Convention from uh, Maryland. Who are the two guys from New York? One of which is probably Brutus, the Anti-Federalist Arthur. Troy, we spent several months last year talking about Brutus. He's probably one of the two people who left the Constitutional Convention from New York. Uh, McKean, for sure. So, Sedgwick, yes, Theodore Sedgwick. I was just mentioning the Sheffield Resolves, which were many, leading up to the Revolutionary War, many uh, towns wrote resolves about their rights. The Sheffield Resolves were written in Western Massachusetts. Theodore Sedgwick was there. While he was there, one of the slaves working in the house of the Ashley family was a person uh, named uh, Elizabeth Freeman, or Mum Bet. And years later, when Massachusetts wrote his first constitution, Mum Bet would go, would hear a reading of the constitution and say, what do you mean everyone's free and equal? And she would go find Theodore Sedgwick, who was in that house so many years before, to help her with her freedom case. And, and he helps win... Uh, basically prove that Massachusetts, whoopsie daisy, already made slavery illegal a few years ago uh, and and eliminated it from uh, the state. So the Sheffield Resolves, it's a really fun coincidence there. Low? Oh, low without an E, yes. Dwayne, I think we did Dwayne when I ran through the Ds there. Heart, heart, you both did heart, but is there another heart, but a eh, heart, something heart? Lansing, yes. Thank you, Troy and Nick. Both of you got it. One of the two people. Uh, Gadsden, did we do Gadsden? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, Mason, I think we did. And Yates, the other one. No, Jeremy, you keep bringing up Ellington. Like, Duke Ellington is a very different person. Uh, he was a coronet player, I believe was his main instrument in the golden age of jazz. Uh, Broom, yes. Gary, absolutely. Duh, heart. Thank you, Nick. I'm going to take a sip of water. You guys are actually doing great for three people. Helps a lot that Nick popped in, getting that third person. Uh, helps a lot. Let's see. Uh, we got a president of the convention. Oh, that's right. Schuerman. Cushing. No, not just Cushing. Not Cushington. Cushing. William Cushing, who actually was the judge on the case when Theodore Cedric uh, tr tried... Uh, so Theodore Cedric brought Mumbet and a few other slave uh, freedom cases to Massachusetts. Uh, the final one, after all of the appeals, uh, the final verdict was rendered by William Cushing, uh, and he actually uh, gave the he wrote the opinion about how slavery was garbage and we shouldn't have it in Massachusetts. Uh, Nick is Bell, he is helping out very much. Uh, Cynixon. Burke, absolutely. Aiden S. Burke. We just talked about him the other day. Butler. Yeah, you're all doing good. You're all doing good. Troy, you had a whole bunch before you showed up, too. So don't... A bunch of the ones Nick are typing in, you already got. And Galloway, you're getting pretty good at this, too, dude. Uh, 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 you, you, you... Uh, no, I guess Galloway, it wasn't you. I'm confusing you with John Adams. I'm sorry. He was a little bit bashful at first. Galloway's coming up with some real, real hits over here, too. You guys make a great team. And whoever the fourth person is watching, I don't know who you are, but have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. This is fun. 50%. Uh, yeah. No, you're doing pretty good. No, dude. No, it's fine. Things change around. Uh, I, you know, uh, uh, Barrister. Oh, it's it's uh, like a railing. Bannister. With one N? Yes, with one N. McClurg. Great name. Fort One Coles. Uh, Giles, Nick, I think you are the one who guessed Giles before, so <laughs> it's all right. Gilman, yes, Nicholas Gilman, the only declaration signer I have not yet written an article about. Um, not yet. Uh, Matthews, we did. I had trouble spelling. It has one T. <laughs> Excuse me. 
little congested. Otis, yes. James Otis should not be on the list. Doesn't technically fit the qualifications at the beginning, but he makes it, which is good because he's very important. Uh, there's another person who doesn't make it, who's also a rebel in Massachusetts, but his last name is a correct answer, so I won't give it away. Oh, Jackson, the best secretary of all time. If you like shitty secretaries, sorry for my language. Merry Christmas. Uh, Rush, I think we got Rush. Yes, we did. Dr. Benjamin, definitely important. Who's the who, who's the other secretary who was secretary of the Continental Congress the whole time uh, and was in New York as secretary of the Continental Congress when the convention met in Philadelphia? Troy, I know you know this one. Who was the secretary of the Continental Congress? Technically shouldn't be on this list either because he was hired and a paid employee of the Continental Congress, not an elected delegate. Uh, I think we did Fitzsimmons. Yeah, we did. Uh, yes, Tom's son. Two O's, but yes, Thompson. You didn't put a P, which is good. So it's better you get the E instead of an O than add a P. That's more wrong. Wisner, Henry Wisner of New York, for sure. Pinkneys, we did. I'll put it again just to make sure. But yeah, we got those brothers. Sterling, definitely. Did we already do that one? Sterling? I thought Sterling was the correct answer. Kinsey? Yes, it is. I thought that was wrong. Oh, man. I still haven't gotten all the names on this list <laughs> after years of doing it. Who would know for sure? Really important from New Jersey. Important with prisoner exchanges. Uh, Lynch. I think we did the Lynch's father and son. Walton. Walton, there it is. Izzard. Yes, Ralph Izzard. Ralph was a name they used back then. Doesn't seem right to me, but they did. Uh, Huger. Gave Thompson the Nordic spelling. Well, good for you. <laughs> That's the wrong spelling. So, good for you. You should go play uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Lawrence is a correct answer. Paka. Yes. The signer of the declaration. Spate. I think we got Spate. Yep. Richard Dobbs Spate. Great name. Uh, doing really good, actually. Caswell. For sure. Richard Caswell. Important in, I think it was North Carolina. Um, Davey. Did we get Davey? We did not. Gary, I think we did Gary. I think Nick popped in out of nowhere with Gary <laughs> a little earlier. Uh, Livermore, we did. We did, I know, because I corrected uh, whoever typed it in before. Liver, not Livermore. Livermore. Rodney, Caesar Rodney, absolutely. Arguably my favorite midnight ride. I guess if it's my favorite, that's my opinion, so I'd be arguing with myself. But the argument's there. Binding for sure. Van Dyke. Yes. There's a few Vans. Van, I'm going to... Ren... Salir? Is it one N? Ren in two S's? Salir. Got it. Van Ren Salir. Uh, Broom, I think we got. Uh, Josh Hartnett. Just kidding. It's no T. It's just Harnett. Um, let's see. Who are we missing here? Constitutional Convention Delegate, First co first Continental Congress, and the Constitutional Convention, and President... Oh! Oh! Who signed the Declaration? Who's got the big signature? Dean. Don't ever forget Silas Dean. Thank you, my friend, Troy. Silas Dean. One of my favorites. One of my faves. Uh, yeah, who's got the big signature? I don't think we did it. I don't think we did it. Yes. Hancock. Ooh, how sad would we have been? We missed Johnny Hands over there. In addition to Johnny Hands, let's see. Um, I'm not good at giving hints anymore. Losing my mind. A decoration signer from Pennsylvania. First cut of the kind. I'm going to give you some. Rhodes. Uh... Declaration signer from Pennsylvania. Do we do? We didn't do George Washington. <laughs> I was like, who's the president of the Constitutional Convention? George. Boy, there it is, Nick. Thank you. Baldwin. Oof, that's why we do the big six right away, isn't it? I always say, imagine if we didn't get George Washington, having done how many George Washington questions this evening? Carol is probably two correct answers. Yes, sir. Well done. Um, 
Uh, where's the side of the Declaration of Independence from Pennsylvania? I don't know. I don't know. I can't think. Time's up. Time's up. You know, 167 for three people is not a bad run. That is not a bad run at all. Nelson. Uh, yeah, I'm just, oh, George Ross. Uh, there's Nelson. Okay, so let's let's look at what we look at. Uh, we got white but not brown. We missed future president James Monroe. Not great. Uh, William Grayson, the first person to die in the in in uh in office for the United States government after the Constitution. Thomas Nelson Jr. Uh, John Blair. Page usually just an easy name to remember. George Ross. He signed the declaration. That's important. Uh, William Macklay. That's a tough one. Thomas Hartley. These are these are tough ones. Oh, Muhlenberg is two correct answers. That's one we usually get. Oh, we didn't say Livingston. Interestingly, there's only one Livingston on this entire list, which is strange, uh, especially because his cousin, Robert Livingston, was part of the committee of five that was drafting the Declaration of Independence, but he ran away before the signing. Again, it's not every member of the Continental Congress. It's every, you know, there are qualifiers. John Herring. Uh, surprised we didn't say that. We did get Vining, though. We got Wisner and Borum, so that's fine. William Floyd. That makes me sad. He has a special place in my heart. I used to give tours at his house. Philip Schuyler. That's a super famous name nowadays. Surprised we didn't get that. John Lawrence. Benson. Hawthorne. Sylvester. Just names. Francis Dana. That one. Ah, I like Francis Dana. He's the one who was sent to meet with Catherine the Great. Uh, Catherine the Great was alive at this time. And Francis Dana went over to meet with her and she would not recognize America because she did not want to go to war with England. And instead, she founded the League of Armed Neutrality. And the League of Armed Neutrality was a group of European countries who didn't want to get involved in the wars with France and Spain and whatever was happening in colonial North America. Uh, instead, they just basically had a League of Nations that said, hey, if anyone messes with any of us, we will unite together to protect each other, but we're, we're going to stay neutral, armed neutrality. Uh, so Francis Dana's time in Russia with Catherine the Great was fruitless, but he went there. Nathaniel Gorham, mm, that's, I forgot about him. He's, uh, he was head of the Committee of uh, the Whole during the Constitutional Convention. He spent about half of the Constitutional Convention sitting in George Washington's chair overseeing the heated debates at the Constitutional Convention. Uh, it was only when uh, those debates were over he would step down and George Washington would step in for the official vote. So he kind of did the hard part of Washington's job at the Constitutional Convention. Not that I'm criticizing Washington, of course, at the Constitutional Convention. He was sitting back. Nick, thank you so much for coming. Uh, great time. Uh, you have a Merry Christmas. Uh, we're going to be doing trivia next Thursday again because the holidays. I'm actually been saying I'm considering uh, keeping it there. Uh, there's another Livingston down here. Just realize that. Good. There's two Livingstons. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll pop myself up nice and big for the finale here. Uh, happy holidays, guys. This was a lot of fun. As always, we're going to do trivia this time next week. Again, I put it at 8.15 now. Give you guys on the West Coast a little bit more time to get in. Seems like you appreciate that more. We want to do it too late for people on the East Coast. Um, uh, as I was saying earlier, I am going to be making a bunch of changes. I'm not entirely sure what all of the changes will be. Uh, you may have noticed I've missed a few daily founders over the last few weeks. It is a lot uh, to put in. So I'm hoping to focus. I'm probably going to cut down the daily founders to a few days a week uh, so I can focus a little bit more on things like, you know, not only trivia, uh, but I do the read alongs on Tuesdays now. We're doing the live uh, Patreon for the Patriots on Patreon live discussions on Sunday night. So if you want to be part of that, definitely sign up. I am going to be taking clips of that and putting them out all week long. So some, most of the good content you will also see, but if you want to participate and speak back and forth, that option is there for you. Uh, also doing this will free up Fridays and Saturdays so I can do some more like special events as I've done in the past. You guys really seem to like when I talk about, you know, I did the president's, uh, the first election. I'm cats coming in. I did the, uh, you know, top 100. So things like that. I'm not going to do 100 till next year again, but uh, things like that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So this is it for Christmas. Uh, I will see you guys early next week. We're uh, Patriots, like I said, on Sunday, read along for the Federalist number 21. We are finally done with the history lessons. Thank you, Mr. Madison. Uh, we're going to move on to some more, we'll say, pressing issues when it comes to the Constitution itself some more of the debates with the anti-federalists essentially they're having in the papers 
that will be fun. Other than that, like I said, I hope you guys have a happy holiday. I'm taking a break this week, so you should, won't be seeing any more videos till Sunday. But until then, uh, you guys are amazing. This is a lot of fun. And I forget what the sign-off is, but let's just go with Peace Field. And I will be back with more Founders for you after Christmas. Wrong button.